Okay, time for yin yoga. We'll start today seated. So as you come to seated on your mat, maybe have a block or two. If you have a couple blocks, have those nearby just within reach. And we'll start by, let's just have the legs out in front of us, uh, arms down by the sides, sit up tall, close the eyes. So you just have this L shape with the body. Belly hugs in for support to that lower back. You're trying to lift the chest without taking the shoulders with you. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Back out through the mouth. Deep breath in, fill up. Slow as you can, sigh it out the mouth. Inhale, in through the nose. Last time, back out through the mouth. Deep breath in through the nose. Back out through the nose. Keep going a few more times on your own. Feeling how this breath work is starting to change how you feel. Setting you up for your practice ahead. Trying to hang on to this breath as long as you can. or at least come back to it as quickly as you can. Blink open the eyes, bring the sole of the right foot to the mat so you're bending the leg. Step this right foot over the left leg. Then you'll grab onto this outer right ankle bone just to move the foot out to the left. So you're working towards stacking the right knee on top of the left knee. This will look different in all bodies. So just do the best you can with it. If you have something going on in this right knee and it's not working out, you can bring the sole of the foot inside of the left leg. It is a different hip opening. So if you have the option to bring the foot out, then do that. So this is half shoelace and we'll just do half because we want to get into the backside of this left leg too. So you may want blocks nearby. All you'll do is start to fold forward over the legs. And as you fold forward, you'll feel the weight that you're putting on the hips and the backside of that left leg. Blocks are great for support. They can go underneath the arms, rounding of the spines. Okay. You can let the head and the neck go. Just try not to go all the way in. So keep it an easy, soft place, which might mean that you're sitting more upright and that's fine. It's wherever you feel the opening start to happen. And we stay away from our edge. So we have some place to go as we breathe in the shape, the body begins to open and accept the shape. And there's this moment of surrender within the amount of time that we're here. And that's the beauty of this practice. We have extra time in each pose. So you want to give yourself space to grow into it. You might find if you're using props to support you, keep you in alignment, maybe as the body starts to open, they're taking you out of the pose too much. You can always adjust them. Don't feel like they have to stay in the same spot or the opposite. Maybe it starts to become, it builds too much. You fall too deep into it back out. Use the props to help you do that if you have them. And if you don't have props, the hands are just resting on the mat outside the legs and the head's going down toward the legs.
And you'll start to bring yourself back up. If you have blocks in the way, just set those off to the side. Bring the hands back behind you, leaning back, soles of the feet to the mat wide, and you're moving the knees side to side. And we'll stay in this right leg for the next posture. I'll give you a couple options because this doesn't work for everybody. So legs are extended out in front of you. This time you're bringing the sole, the right foot back behind you. Maybe I'll just demo from this angle. So legs are out in front of you. You lean to the left, bend that right leg. Top of the foot comes down toward the mat. If you feel like you're, you're leaning way over to the left, another option, you can take a block. You have to extend the legs back out, take a block, lowest height. You can pop the hips up onto a block and then do the same thing. Lean over to the left, see if you can get the sole of the right foot down. And this is a great place to be. You're still getting that quad opening, getting into the knee. This isn't great for all knees. So if you're feeling anything and it's too much, then you can come out of it and I'll show you what to do, but it is a great knee opener if you do have healthy knees. Okay. So if you're not doing this shape, because the knee doesn't like it. It's the same thing as before. Sole the right foot inside of the left leg and that should work. Okay. So half saddle. I think I'm liking being up on the block. Uh, right leg is back. Left leg's out in front of you. Remember, we want to keep this easy. Hips are even on whatever's underneath you. You could start to walk the hands back if you feel like this isn't deep enough. So maybe you start to walk the hands back. The, the hips have to be down on something. You want to feel like that right knee is down on the mat. It's not lifting weight up. If it is, then maybe we've come too far back in the recline position. And you're also getting into the top of that right foot, the ankle, the SI joint, the lower back. And you have about two minutes left. If you feel like you want to go back further, you can, if you're up on a block, this is as far as you go. If the hips are easily touching the mat, you might be able, some people can recline all the way back and lie all the way down onto their back with the head on the mat and keeping the same shape in the legs. If that's you go for it. If you need to make any adjustments, make them. Another option for reclining back could be coming down onto the forearms. So you're not all the way back. Chest is still lifted. Head is still lifted. You can stay looking forward. If it's too much, then you just come back up onto the hands and you stay here. And if you're all the way on your back, start to make your way up onto the forearms. You want to slowly work your way out of this. Once you're on the forearms and you're looking forward, you'll make your way up onto the hands. So you're still reclined back, chest is back. 
And then you can start to walk the hands forward, lean over to the left, extend that right leg forward, soles of the feet to the mat, knees side to side, get that circulation back in the right leg. and legs extended out in front of you. If you're up on a block, you can stay there. If you're on the mat, see how it feels on this side. And then shift over to the right, bend that left leg, top of the foot comes down to the mat, reach back with the hands, left knees down on the mat, chest is lifted, and you're back in half saddle on this side. You can close the eyes if you feel relaxed. And we're often different side to side. This side's easier for me than the first side. So I'm able to recline back a little bit more. I don't need the block underneath my hips on this side. You might be able to go all the way back. I'll let you decide when it's time to do that. Only if it's really easy and it just feels luxurious to lie all the way back. If you're working your way to that, take your time. We'll all start to feel some length on that left quad, trying to keep the left knee down. Maybe starting to feel some heat in that left ankle, top of the foot, left knee. And this is still a hip opening. It's an internal hip opening. You're all the way on your back, start to make your way up onto your forearms. Take your time. You don't have to rush. Take a minute to locate the forearms. Once you press those down, looking forward, you'll make your way up onto the hands, still keeping the chest reclined. Once that happens, start to walk the hands forward. You'll lean to the right, extend that left leg out in front of you, feet wide, knees wide, and then bring the knees side to side. And we'll come back into that half shoelace to even things out, but let's just stick with this counter for now. So you'll extend the legs out in front of you, bring the sole of the left foot to the mat, step the left foot over the right leg, grab onto that outer left ankle, bring the foot out to the right, sitting even on the sit bones, even here, you can prop yourself up on a block if you want to, and then start to walk the hands forward, folding over, 
the legs, let the head and the neck go rounding of the spine, spine, maybe use props underneath the hands or the forearms. So much of this, well, I guess all yoga, uh, physical yoga, uh, practices is about finding the place where you should be. So feeling like you can sustain in the shape without too much of a struggle, especially in yin, which can be challenging for some of us. Sometimes we push ourselves too far in and we're wondering how much longer we have left. That's a good cue that you've gone too far. If it's a physical response from the body, that's trying to get you out of it. I understand too. Sometimes it's just the stillness that gets our minds going, but that's why we focus on the breath gives the mind something to do mantras or just a short phrase sometimes helps too. Something you can repeat and you can just make those up yourself, whatever you want it to be. A common one starts with I am and you fill in the blank. You just keep saying that over and over again to yourself. It's like a positive affirmation. And a great exercise to get you out of the hamster wheel of the swirl, the thoughts. So you controlling the mind instead of the mind controlling you. Let's start to make our way back up to seated, set the blocks off to the side. If you're using them, lean back, uncross the legs, feet wide, knees side to side. I'm just going to turn back around. So I'm oriented in the way that uh, works with light. So from here, legs out is extended out in front of you. Uh, maybe shift side to side. So you're even on the sit bones. We'll just do a forward fold straight forward. So you can start to round the spine, slide the hands forward, let the head and the neck go and do it without props. You could use the blocks again. You could put one between the legs on the narrow height and then build until the forehead can easily rest on the blocks. You could also take a bolster and put it on top of the legs and fold forward over that. So see what kind of a forward folds working best for you. And enjoy this change with just the legs out in front of you. So you're not in a hip opening, but you are still opening up the back side of the body. And this is one where if you can touch the feet, it actually might be better if you don't touch the feet. Sometimes the arms have to work too hard to make that happen. In fact, turning the palms to face up is always a great idea. It changes the feeling of the shape inside the body, makes it a little bit more relaxing. So you're not in this, uh, attitude of doing the pose. You're just feeling the pose.
And we'll start to come back up to seated. If you have anything in front of you, set it off to the side. You may want to bolster for this next pose. You can definitely do it without any props. I'll show you both ways. Let's come forward to hands and knees to start. And we'll just do some cat cow to get the spine going in. Um, we've been doing a lot of four folds. So just finding an arch in the spine. So lift the tail, lift the chest, heart forward on the inhale, on the exhale, round the spine, which will feel familiar chin in toward the chest, and then keep going at your own pace, inhaling forward, hug the belly in, lift the tail on the chest and exhale round, tuck the tail, scoop the belly round the spine. As you go at your own pace, Sometimes eyes closed can be nice to keep it more relaxing. It also helps you feel what's happening in the back. So you can just take note, you're collecting information. It's not about passing judgment on what's happening there. One more cycle, forward and back, take your time. And then from here, we'll come into Sphinx pose. So Sphinx pose without the bolster, you'll just bring the forearms down to the mat, hips to the mat, chest reaches forward, tops of the feet stay down. If you'd like to use a bolster, you're on hands and knees, slide the bolster the wide way underneath you, elbows go in front of the bolster. So you bring the forearms down, walk the feet back and rest the um, torso on top of the bolster. It keeps the chest lifted, adds a little extra padding. Optional, you don't have to use it either way. You're in the back bend. So chest is reaching forward. You can close the eyes, make some space in the backside of the neck. So if you were looking anywhere, you'd be gazing down the bridge of the nose. Tops of the feet are back behind you so the toes aren't tucked. Tailbones pointing back toward the heels. Pubic bone is touching the mat. Belly's lifted away from the mat. Even if, either way, if you're using a bolster, you're not using a bolster, the belly's still lifted. you feel like the chest isn't lifted high enough from the mat, then that probably means the elbows need to line up underneath the shoulders. Sometimes I see the elbows are way far back behind the shoulders. So walk them forward if that's happening and bring the elbows in. So they're not wider than the shoulders. So you want hands, elbows, and shoulders to all be in one line.
And from Sphinx pose, if the eyes are closed, start to blink them open. You'll look down toward the mat. Uh, you'll come back to hands and knees, lifting up the hips. Set the bolster off to the side if you were using it. If you have blocks, bring the blocks to the mat. You want them to be uh, on the lowest height, the long way in front of you. Each one completely on the mat, but you want them to be toward the outer edges of the mat if you were using one. So big toes together, hip shift back. You're coming into child's pose, but we want to land the hands on top of the blocks. So you might need to adjust where they end up, but hands end up on top of the blocks. This is a shoulder opening. Let the head and the neck go. And you're in child's pose with the hands lifted. If it's too much for the shoulders, skip the blocks. And if you don't have blocks, you're just in child's pose with the hands down in front of you on the mat or the ground. And if for some reason, Let's say the knees need more space so the hips are up higher, then just keep the hands down flat on the mat in front of you. You don't want to lift the hands up. This is only if the hips go back easily toward the heels and the knees are okay with that. But you'll know it'll be really difficult to do this if the hips are high. You'll start to lift the head up. If you have the hands up on blocks, bring them off of the blocks, set the blocks off to the side. And let's do cat cow again, just to release the spine. So come up onto hands and knees, inhale, reach the heart forward, lift the tail and on the exhale, round the spine. Inhale, go forward, exhale round couple more times on your own. Take your time with it. If you feel like you want to stay in one spot and breathe, you can. And you, you'll find your way back to neutral spine. You'll come down to lying down on your right side. So come down onto your stomach first. Keep the forearms underneath you so the chest is lifted. Come onto your right side. 
And once you come onto the right side, uh, bring the right hand so that it's supporting the head. So on the right side. So left hand is down in front of you on the mat for support. Left leg reaches forward. You can keep it straight. So maybe the foot's in line with the hip. Stay here. You could play with bending that bottom knee without touching it. Just bend the bottom knee. It's like you're trying to bring the heel in toward the glute. Another option, you can take this left hand, reach back, see if the foot and the hand can connect. And we're coming into, well, you're in cat pulling its tail, which is a nice twist uh, and a nice way to get the spine going. So stay right here. If you like, I'll give you an option to take it deeper. Um, just give us some time here just so the body can settle, get used to the shape. We don't need to rush into diving in deeper right out of the gate. And that left foot, it could be in line with the hip. It could be lower than the hip. So just see where it wants to go. So maybe you stay here with the, the head lifted up with the right hand, or maybe you reach that right arm forward, come onto your back. So the head's resting on the mat, and then you're opening up the chest toward the sky. That's a deeper variation of the pose. It's a deeper twist. See if it works. If it doesn't come back onto your right side with the head supported in the hand, and that's still a great place to be. Maybe you close the eyes wherever you are. And I'm hoping the right leg, the bottom leg is familiar with this shape, right? We've done um, the half shoelace pose, half saddle, child's pose. So it's been bent quite a bit. Might be a little easier to bring that foot in toward the body without force, just get it to where you need it to be. So you connect with it. If it feels like it's too much to hang onto the foot, you can still do this pose without hanging onto the foot. So let the, let the foot go, keep the leg bent. If it'll, if the knee's okay with that, and you're still in the shape. And if you have the foot, start to release it, roll back onto your right side, bring the head up onto the hand, extend the bottom leg, and then stack that left leg on top of the bottom leg. Shift onto your back. So just come to lying down on your back, soles of the feet to the mat. And let's do a counter pose before we switch sides. Even just lying here on the mat, you might feel the right side of the back's a little bit more warm than the left side. Bring the knees in toward the chest, start to uh, move the knees around in a circle, keeping the knees and the feet together. So feeling those hips roll around underneath you. And then switch the direction, go the other way. Set the feet back down onto the mat, 
roll over to your left side, lift the head. Let's get that left arm underneath you. So the head supported with the left hand legs are extended back behind you. And once you have the legs straight, start to bring that right leg forward, the top leg, maybe the foot's in line with the hip. Maybe it's lower. See where that ends up comfortably. And then start to bend the bottom knee so that heel comes in toward the glute. Maybe reach back with that right hand, see if the foot and the hand connect. And then we stay here. So don't feel like you have to connect with the foot. You can still do the shape with the hand down in front of you and just have the legs going. If the foot and the hand connect, great. It's a little bit deeper. You're welcome to stay here or reach that left arm forward. Come onto your back, back of the head, rest down on the mat. See if it works on this side. Again, option to let go of that uh, bottom foot. Eyes can close. Still with the same breath we started with. You'll start to release that bottom foot. Right hand comes forward. If it's back behind you, bring the head up into the left hand and start to bring that right leg back so that the legs are stacked. Come onto the back, use the feet together or use the feet to get there and then keep the soles of the feet on the mat. Bring the knees in toward the chest. Same counter pose we did before. Keep the knees and the feet together. Just start to move the knees around in a circle. And go the other way. So we'll move into some external hip opening. We started with internal, we'll finish with external. So you'll set the feet down onto the mat, roll over to your right side, use the hands to bring yourself up to seated. And then here, you can definitely do this without any props. You're coming into Supta Baddha Konasana, uh, but I'll show you. So I'll show you first without props. If you don't have props, 
lie down onto your back, soles of the feet together, knees wide, arms down by the sides. If you do have props, you could use blocks underneath the knees. And that just offers a little bit more uh, support so that there isn't any pulling on the inner thighs growing area. This could be a really nice shape to be in. If you feel like you don't need the blocks, skip the blocks. It's just an option. Close the eyes, start to settle in. So feel the lengthening of the inner thighs, hips. This is a great calming, cooling pose. I probably said it a million times before, but I like reminding you that it's something you can do in the night if you're having a hard time going back to sleep or just getting to sleep because it's an easy shape to do in bed. It also feels good if you hold this for a while and then you extend the legs forward. Don't do that now. We'll do that eventually and you'll feel that sensation. You start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Sometimes this pose is so relaxing. You kind of just forget where everything is. This is a nice way to locate where the hands and the feet are. Bring the hands to the outer thighs and help the knees back together. Shoo those blocks off to the side. If you're using them, they're going to be too close in. Extend the legs out in front of you. And now you feel that release on the top of the pelvis. This is the counter. So just letting the legs out and be out in front of you. And we'll come into one more external hip opening. It's asymmetrical. So we'll do uh, one side at a time. Hug the right knee in toward the chest. Left leg stays extended out in front of you. And then hanging on to the right knee with the right hand, bring the right knee out to the right. Left hand can just rest on the body somewhere and you're not going as wide as you can go. You're just going maybe out to the right halfway and we'll do half happy baby. So you can grab onto the back of the thigh, the calf, ankle. Maybe you can grab the, uh, the foot if that's easy. We won't, this won't be as long of a hold just so you know, so you can figure out uh, the right space to be in. 
So ideally that right knee is outside the torso. You want to think of this as our dragons, our lunges. So it's a lunge, but you're on your back, heads down. And sometimes we can get into things deeper when we're on our back versus the other way. Can be a fun thing to note how lunges feel when the feet are down on the ground versus not on the ground. Both hips are on the mat, ideally both shoulders too. Last few breaths here. See if there's any more space. And start to hug that right knee in toward the chest. Extend the right leg up, grab onto the back of the right thigh. You can just press the heel up toward the sky, toes down toward the face, get into the back side of that right leg before we switch sides. Then bend the knee, set the right foot down to the mat, extend the right leg out in front of you. Feel the difference in what the length feels like on the right side versus the left side. Hug the left knee in toward the chest, give it a squeeze. You might even find that that right leg feels heavier. It wants to go down toward the mat instead of lift up away from the mat. Then right hand rests on the body, torso, top of the right thigh. Open the left knee out to the left, just about halfway. And then find happy baby, half happy baby on this side. So maybe back of the thigh, calf, ankle, or outer edge of that left foot. Heads resting down, left knees wider than the torso. If we can, that's where the hip opening starts to happen. And we're putting a little, this is definitely a pose that requires more effort in yin. You still want there to be some ease. So see where you can back off.
then hug that left knee in toward the chest, extend the left leg up, grabbing onto the back of the left thigh. Let's bring the heel up and the toes down toward the face. Left knee comes back in toward the chest. Extend the left leg out in front of you, arms down by the sides, Shavasana, probably with no props. If you feel like you need props, then grab them, go for it. But it could be nice to just do it traditional without any props today. Just make sure you're not touching anything. If you were using props, they're probably all around you. You want to scoot those off to the side. It does affect the nervous system. If you need to lift that chest up to get the shoulder blades underneath you, take a moment to do that. And one more inhale in through the nose. Sigh it out the mouth, let it go. Body goes back to breathing on its own. Sending time in this stillness. Start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Find a stretch on your mat. Reach out through the arms and the legs. Start to walk the feet in, bending the legs, rolling over onto your right side, keeping the eyes closed if you can, lying in the fetal position. using the left hand to press yourself up to a comfortable seat. You're welcome to sit up on a prop if you'd like, but it's just to close our practice, final part of this ceremony. And as you sit up tall with the eyes closed, taking another look inside to what's changed, being grateful you decided to spend some time with yourself on your mat. Bring the hands together in front of you. Maintain the lift of the chest as you bow the head, taking a moment to honor and acknowledge your heart and your spirit, as well as everyone around you. Bring the head back up, blink open the eyes. Namaste. Thanks so much. Hope you're feeling better in your body and just overall.
I'll see you next time.